Hey traders, Raggy here. And in this video, let's take a look at the Dow and, and why I think this point of control for September for now seems to be containing the move in the Dow. Now let's think about the events that we have today, Tuesday, which might be partly the reason for a lack of a willing to punch up to higher highs and break the point of control. We have six Fed events. Some of the members spoke twice, some just once, but six Fed events between 9.15 and 3 p.m. Eastern. And then the entire session has the fact that we have the presidential debates this evening looming over. And that's enough for the market to take a pause, I believe. Uh, not necessarily sell off, but perhaps put in an inside day the way the Dow has. But again, notice the point of control we have here. But rather than getting down on the fact that the market's not putting in higher highs, let's get opportunistic on this. So there's a few ways to do this. First of all, we can segue over to the IYT, which has been, in terms of relative outperformance, far better and more bullishly structured. Now, better for me, for buys, is always going to be a bullishly structured market. The, predict, the predictability, the probability of uptrends continuing to move higher is usually better. So if I've got the IYT pulling back, kind of a stall we're having here, I absolutely welcome an opportunity to buy something closer to 196.60 or even the top line of the wave around 197.80. That area would be terrific to get a pullback to. So really anything inside the wave like we've seen previous would be terrific. And if this is the catalyst for that, excellent. The other sector that we've talked a bit about is the XLI. So we're moving from the transports to the industrials. Uh, it's not that different looking than the Dow itself, but the fact that we're a Above the point of control on the XLI shows that the point of control is actually support in XLI versus resistance like we see on the YM, which is going to affect the DIA as well. And that kind of wraps up with a singular thought here, gang. If you're a futures trader and we're taking a look at the Dow futures and then we're segueing over to XLI IYT, remember that if you're trading the S&P futures, NASDAQ futures, Dow futures, you're trading a collection of stocks. What makes them wonderful and unique is the fact that we have leverage. But when you take a look at the IYT, which has been something I've been buying even more actively than the Dow futures, even more actively than the DIA is, this too is a collection of stocks. Now, if I were to buy the IYT you know, straight up, I don't get any beautiful leverage like I do on the future side. But if I buy the calls on IYT, on a pullback, or if I look at a put credit spread on a pullback, or if I look to leg into a call vertical on a pullback, there's a lot of things that we can do with options that give us that leverage. And then in that way, to me, the natural extension of futures index trading is understanding what's happening in the heavily weighted sectors, these related sectors, and the stocks that are heavily weighted within those as well. This to me opens up the futures market to really what it is when you're trading the indices, which are the stocks within them. So think about that. Don't be, you know, don't put yourself in a tiny little pond if you can look and start to cherry pick like I have been in the IYT. Look for what sectors are relatively outperforming, look for what stocks are relative outperforming, and you're gonna have a whole lot more and sometimes better opportunity. So just something to think about. I'll see you in the next update.